Hello again. Uh, this lecture is uh, related to the uh, calculation of transfer shear stress on I beams. And uh, the first thing I want to show you actually is how the shear stress is going to vary as a function of height of the I beam. So you see here you have a white, what we call a typical white flange beam uh, subjected to a, a internal shear load V. Uh, transfer shear, and we want to see how the shear stress is changing as a function of the. So, you guys already know that uh, the shear stress on the top of the beam is going to be zero because Q, the first moment of area at that point, is zero, so tau is equal to zero here, and also that's the same as the bottom of the beam. So, we also saw for uh, T beam how this shear stress changes, so you know that. This is going to parabolically change, reach a certain value. And because there is a jump in the thickness here on the flange to thickness on the web, there would be a big jump of shear stress uh, due to the fact that the thickness on the web is smaller. And then it parabolically increases and reaches a maximum value right on the neutral axis. So this would be the tau max. And then, of course, because of symmetry, the same thing happens below. So you see the same variation down here. So basically, this is how shear stress changes um, on I beams, transfer shear stress. Remember, typically, to calculate the shear stress, you have to use this formula, tau equal V, which is the internal shear times Q, which is called first moment of area, divided by I times T, where I is the moment of inertia with respect to this axis, to the centroidal axis, right? And T is the, the width at which you're calculating the shear stress. And that's why the shear stress jumps, because right on the flange, the T is this much, and then when you go on the web, the T becomes much smaller, so there is a big difference. Okay, now, what we notice here in this picture is that it looks as if the web is taking the most burden uh, for carrying the shear stress. So one quick approximation that we could do is that we say, okay, instead of using the VQ over IT, we could say, okay, if you want to calculate the maximum shear stress, let's say, right on the neutral axis, why don't we just take the shear load and divide it by what we call the area of the web, where this would be the area of the web, the actual area of the web. And this value here, when it compared to this value, for a typical wide flange beam, okay, should be less than 10%. And I'm going to show that to you in the next problem, except that the next problem, my beam is not a typical wide flange beam. But I'm going to do actually the calculation in the, the example in the next page based on using the formula, the shear formula, VQ over IT, and then I'll use the the approximation, so remember this is an approximation. And you know that in design, uh, shear stress, transfer shear stress is not that important as compared to, for example, shear stress due to twisting the TC over J. And usually that shear stress, this shear stress doesn't control the design. So let's go to the next page and do a problem, a simple problem. Here for the sake of um, uh, quick calculation, let me see the sh applied shear load is 560 pounds or any value you would like to use. And you'll see in a minute why I picked uh, 560 pounds, so I don't even have to use a calculator. Basically. What I want to show you here is that if given the, uh, that the shear load here, the transfer shear load acting on this beam, now remember that this is not really a wide flange beam. If the, the, the width of this flange was like more like seven or eight inches, then I could say really it's a wide flange beam. Basically, this is just four inch versus the depth, which is six inches here. Okay, so the objective is to find the maximum shear stress. Now we know that the maximum shear stress will happen right on here, right on the neutral axis. So let's go ahead and first calculate the um, uh, the uh, I. So you guys remember in the class that I can be calculated by basically 
thinking of this as one whole rectangle uh, of bh cube 112 bh cube where b is 4 and h would be 6 4 6 cube right and then you could take this piece and this piece out but since the uh, this axis is right on match with the axis centroidal axis of the two pieces that we're going to take out we could actually think of this as a rectangle with the width of three inches if you take the one inch out of four right uh, by four so that would be a three four cube when you calculate this you come out to be 56 inches to the power four so let me actually erase this stuff i have here because i really need to use this area to show you stuff related to the um, q now so remember our formula is what let's put it up here tau equal vq over it so we already calculated i t would be by the way the uh, the thickness right here right where the shear stress is maximum which is uh, one one inch okay so how do we calculate q q has to be calculated right here at this level so it really doesn't matter uh if i use the shaded area above or below so the area that i'm talking about is the area of the flange and the area the half of the area of the web so remember q is the summation for um, shapes that we could broken into pieces would be y times a so let's see let's start with the web what's the area of this guy the area is uh two by one right so that's two inches squared but what is y here y is the distance from the centroid of this guy to the neutral axis so that would be one inch okay then for the flange we have an area of four inch squared right times what the distance again between the centroid of this guy and the centroidal axis which happens to be two and a half inch so that comes out to be and this is q max right right on the neutral axis so that comes out to be 12 inch cube all right again let me erase this here for you so we don't have to worry about this okay we're ready to uh apply the uh the equation so let's go ahead and calculate tau max. Tau max would be uh, VQ over IT. So this is Q max, of course. So V I picked up to be 560 pounds. Now you see because this uh, I was 56, so I can get a ratio of 10. Q max is uh, 12 inches cube, and T is this thickness here, one inch okay so this comes out to be a nice 120 psi by the way unit should work should be psi because this is a uh, pound this is inch cube this is inch to the power four and this is inches okay just one quick comparison now in the uh, previous page i said that this shear stress compared to the shear stress here there should be 10 percent difference for a typical white flange beam but the beam I have here is not really white flange. But let's see how close do we get if we use the approximation equation. So remember, by approximation equation, I, I mean just take V and divide it by the area of the web. So V is 560 pound, and the area of the web is right here, which is a 4 by 1. So that's 4 inches squared. So this comes out to be not that bad, 140 psi. Of course, this should be much closer to that. It should be within the 10%. So as I said earlier, the good news is that shear stress, this type of shear stress, transfer shear stress, is not the dominant shear stress in design. So therefore, you could do a quick calculation, especially for an I-beam. You don't even have to use the VQ over IT. You could easily just do a quick cal calculation by the approximation equation of V divided by area of the web. As always, thank you for watching and listening.